In this video, we're going to be talking about the Scotch Lock and why I hate them so much. Hey guys, this is Josh with the Update Channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing something that when I see them, and I see them often, whether it's in a truck or a piece of equipment or a bus or an RV, it makes me mad because it's unprofessional when I see them because someone else was lazy. And what am I talking about? Well, you probably already guessed because of the thumbnail, but I'm talking about this. This little plastic and small amount of metal is an electrical connector. It's called a scotch lock or an insulation displacement connector. It's a piece of junk. And I'm going to tell you why it's a piece of junk and why you should never use them. And when you see them, you should get angry, just like me. And let's get into it. So the point of a scotch lock is for adding a wire to an existing circuit that's already there. Now, of course, using a scotch lock is not the only way to add a wire to a vehicle. Let's say you're installing a radio that wasn't there already, or a little ceiling fan, or something. GPS monitoring system. But you don't want to go through all the trouble of running wires the right way. Now, what is the right way to run a wire? Well, if you're installing a new circuit, there's only a couple ways you should be doing that. The best way is to go find the fuse panel and then go to a spare fuse, or if the accessories slot is not being used, run a wire from there. That is difficult to do. Generally, the manufacturers don't make fuse panels very easy to add to. There are uh, fuses you can add onto a circuit, though, that make it somewhat easy. That's probably the best way. Then it's a fuse circuit. It's coming from the fuse panel to whatever you're trying to power. That's the best way to do it. A lot of people, though, aren't going to do that. And sometimes you have to tap into existing wiring, whether it's a ground or a power. And that's where these guys get used mostly is tapping into a power or a ground three things you want in a connector or a splice in this instance a splice is when you're adding something instead of a connector where you're just connecting two things although a connector can be used as a splice that's one way they make connectors where you can have a single in and two out these will do the three things that connectors need to do now remember, when, anytime you add something to a circuit or a wire, you're going to modify it. But you, what you want out of that modification is, you do not want to damage the wiring or the insulation, that's number one. You, don't want to, you do not want to modify the amperage rating of the wiring past the point of the modification was made at. So let's say it's a 10 gauge wire, which would be a large wire. If, it's, if it needs to carry 40 amps, and then you modify it by putting connectors or whatever, and now it only hurts, we'll pull 30 amps, that's gonna cause resistance, which can cause electrical fires, faults down the stream, all sorts of problems you do not want in the future. And last but not least, it needs to be as corrosion inhibiting as possible. The wiring insulation is there to protect the wiring on the inside. So when you damage that or modify it, it needs to be covered up and not just by electrical tape. Heat shrink's great. Uh, Deutsch style connectors are great. There's hundred different style connectors. Heat shrink is probably the most versatile because you can use a butt connector, then heat shrink over it or solder it, heat shrink over it. Of course, like a Deutsch style connector is weatherproof as part of it, this design itself. And the pins and sockets are great because they will not reduce the amperage rating of the wire downstream which gets us back to this. The way this works is actually extremely simple. There's two barrels. Basically, the open one on this side, you slide it over the current wire. Then you run your new wire into this one. You then just take a pair of pliers or a hammer or a rock, you know. If you're doing this, you could probably use a rock. You probably don't have any tools. And you simply pinch this down and it has two blades, literally blades, it cuts through the insulation. That's why it's called an insulation displacement connector. It then electrically connects the two wires because this thing that looks like a paper clip will just cut into both pieces of wire. Now, let's follow the three criteria I just discussed. Does it 
damage or either the wiring or the insulation? Yes, it damages both. Not only does it cut through the insulation, it also cuts through the wiring itself. So it's damaging the insulation and it's damaging the wiring itself. Great, okay, so it fails on number one. What about number two? Does it modify the amperage rating downstream of the wire? Yes, of course it does. It literally cuts some of the wiring to get into contact with the wiring right there. Of course, you cannot cut some of the wiring without modifying the amperage rating from now on. It's like you're slowly closing off part of a hose. It's not gonna have the same volume of flow after that, same with the amperage rating. Amps are the volume of current through the electrical system. That's why there's different size wires. The bigger the wire, the more amperage rating. If you start cutting some of the wires on the inside, you're decreasing the amperage rating. So it fails on number two. What about number three? Corrosion inhibiting or resistant as possible. This is the worst feature of this. This has zero, zero, not even 1% corrosion inhibiting properties. It's literally a piece of plastic. There's no sealant or anything in this. When you puncture both of your wires now, the one you're running new and the one that you tapped into, it's open now. It's open to moisture, whatever's in the air. It's going to start corroding. These are horrible, especially for external lights, like brake lights on a truck or a trailer. I see them all the time on trailers. Trailers are low to the ground and they're outside all the time. These are horrible. You're gonna get horrible electrical contacts by using these. These, in my opinion, although it wouldn't matter if they did, because they would just make some other similar design, should not really even be manufactured. There is no instance, okay, I can think of almost no instance where this which should be used. they're strong you don't want this on your vehicle anything you own this is going to screw up the circuit you're tapping into and not give you good connection for whatever you're supplying power to the only instance i can think of the advantage this gives you is ease of use you don't need wire strippers you don't need proper crimpers you don't need anything to install these you know where these get installed a lot like radio shops and people that don't know what they're doing where they'll put these on because guess what? They get 10 minutes to install a radio. You think they're gonna properly install wiring? No, they're gonna find the first wire. It doesn't matter if it's your airbag circuit. Oh, it's got voltage? This is getting slapped on there in the future. These are horrible. They are faster and easier. That's the only reason these get sold and that's why you see these a lot. If I was on the space station, which will never happen, and the oxygen circuit for some reason was damaged and I had 37 seconds to run a new wire from the oxygen sensor to whatever needed fixed. Remember, I'm not an astronaut here, obviously. Would I do it? Yes, of course I would do that to save my life, but guess what? Once it's fixed, I would replace this with a proper splice. The only advantage this has is speed. Don't use these. When you see these, you should get angry. They're pieces of junk, all right? Thanks for listening to my rant, and thanks for watching.